my name is Jeremy Sanders, and this is my graduate project for CSCI E7. The title of my project is the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, the first couple paragraphs here are just about the origins of COVID. And the last paragraph is what I was attempting to accomplish with my project. And the first thing is, how does the fatality rate compare to other significant viruses from our past? Number two, is the virus more prevalent in certain states or geographical areas? Three, which comorbidity factors or conditions most contribute to death? And lastly, does the virus affect certain races over others? So this first bit of code here and the first chart associated with it is about case fatality rate. And I'm looking to get the 10 states with the highest fatality rate. And the four libraries that I use throughout the project are Plotly, Matplotlib, Collections, and Pandas. So you can see I import those here. Uh, created the function, initializing some list at the top, pulling in, reading in the file, the CSV file, creating the reader, uh, extracting the first few rows, um, the column heading names. And then um, for each of those rows, I selected the date. That's the last date um, in my data. So I obtained all of my data from the CDC. It's these three C CSV files here, cases of deaths by state, comorbidities, and deaths by race. So that was the source of my, my data was the CDC. So I read all those in, um, I get the state, the number of cases, number of deaths, and then I cast the deaths to a, to a float. And then I'm doing some, some math here. You can see, I'm trying to get the um, um, times about 100 so that I can get uh, the rate obviously. Um, and then this bit of code here um, got from Geeks from Geeks, and it's just returning um, to me the top 10, because obviously I have actually 51, 50 states in Washington, D.C., but I only wanted the top 10. So um, this sorted, and then the, this bit, this line right here um, sorts that for me, and then I'm going to zip the two lists together and then create a, a pandas data frame with that so that I can plot those 10 states. And so this is, everybody's probably familiar with this. This is just the bit of code that, that uh, I used to plot, the horizontal bar, bar plot that I think that we used in homework 12. So that's what's happening here. Uh, you can see the, the top 10 states and the fatality rates. New Jersey um, has a dubious honor of being number one. Um, looks like it might be about 2.4. Um, next bit of code here, is uh, using Plotly, and it is just creating a table. Uh, and so I wanted to have some some point of reference for the fatality rate with some of the other viruses, infectious diseases. And so that's what all this is doing is creating a header with the dict, and I dropped in the, the heading names, and then uh, the actual cells of the table, uh, dropping in just the strings, and then got a little bit of HTML, uh, the B just bolding the headers there. And so then it creates this table, so you can you can see the different uh, viruses that I use as examples and their corresponding case fatality rates. Next section, number two, was the prevalence. So exact same bit of code as, as up above, initializing some lists. Um, same exact thing, same dates. Um, pretty much the exact same bit of code as above. So this is returning to me the 10 states with the most cases per capita. So you can see here, North Dakota actually has is the dubious honor of number one there for the most cases per capita for their population. So moving on, this bit of code is, again, same song and dance. Um, this is returning the 10 states with the least cases per capita. So Hawaii is doing whatever they're doing there. It's working they're just under 6,000. Moving on, again, same thing, same bit of code, uh, just returning different different things here. This one is the 10 states with the most deaths. So instead of cases, I just uh, use deaths. And Mississippi is number one for deaths per 100,000 population. So in other words, for every 100,000 people, Mississippi has 350 deaths. And third is comorbidities. So 
um, here. Uh, you know, just as a side note, that um, it's believed that individuals with comorbidities should take all precautions to avoid getting infected with COVID-19 because um, they typically have the worst prognosis. So if you have any underlying health conditions, probably want to take as many precautions as you can. So again, here, same bit of code. Um, I'm returning 20 here instead of 10, and it had been 10 before, but before I run this bit of code to return the top top values, um, actually changed it to 20. And again, same bit of code, same type of chart, the horizontal bar chart, and you can see the list of, of 20 comorbidities here, flu and pneumonia, uh, number one, probably not a surprise there to anyone. Um, then you can see the rest of the list there. Um, and then again, same thing with cohort still on comorbidities, very pretty much same code, similar code again. This is the 10 states with the most comorbidity COVID-19 deaths. You can see California and Texas are numbers one and two on the list. And then the last is race. And again, same, very similar code here, initializing some lists, reading in the file, extracting the field names for each row. The date's a little bit different on this bit of data. It's through 11, November the 17th. But again, same, same thing as above. Um, casted this to an int instead of a float. And then I'm combining uh, those uh, two lists into one list. Um, then doing the, the counter. Same thing, creating the chart using pandas data frame. And here you can see deaths by race. Whites have the most, but there's also uh, whites make up, I think we'll see it here in a second. The next chart, roughly 60% of the population, 58 or so. So here's all the different, uh, I also printed above the chart, um, the different races and then how many deaths each race has and then the total deaths. And then the last bit of code here is very similar. I brought in this US pop list um, from Wikipedia, which is the source was the census data, but that's the different uh, distribution of populations for the race. And same thing, read in the file, very similar to above. Then we get down here, this is a little bit different chart. It's a group column chart. So this is, I actually like this chart the best. Um, you can see the, the bit of code here that went into it. One of the things that it has is above uh, each column, you can see the, the corresponding uh, uh, percentage uh, above it to display its um, what, what that number was, what that figure was. So you can see here, we've got the legend, uh, just the percent of U.S. population, percent of U.S. COVID deaths. And what I actually learned from that was that Native Americans actually are being disproportionately affected more than any other race. If you read the write-up, um, it's 57% disparity. So that is to say for 1.57 Native Americans are dying for every one Native American in the population. And blacks are next with 24% or 1.24. Blacks die for every one black in the population and whites is 1.08. So we're almost even. The other races are even or below. So some of the things that I learned, my home state of Tennessee is actually number three on the list of most cases per capita. Comorbidities combined with contracting COVID-19 is extremely serious, as I'm sure it is with, with other infectious diseases. Obesity actually was ranked much lower on the list of comorbidities than I thought it was going to be. Uh, several of the media outlets that I follow uh, seem to tout that, that Obesity is one of the highest comorbidities and leading causes of, of COVID deaths, but it was actually 16th, I think, on the list. Um, and then, as I mentioned, Native Americans are disproportionately affected. And while the fatality rate is relatively low compared to other infectious diseases, COVID-19 has a high basic reproduction number. And all that means is uh, right here, the Senate's um, the reproduction number for COVID-19 is two to three. And what that means is for every one case, it leads to two to three secondary cases. So anything above a one leads to propagation and further growth of an outbreak. And then I 
again, I mentioned the libraries that were used, and here's all my references and sources. Okay, thanks.